In this lecture, we are going to discuss equivalence relations. In our previous lecture, we talked about relations and the four properties. Uh, reflexive property, symmetric, transitive, and anti-symmetric property. Now, in the case that R satisfies the first three, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, we say that it is an equivalence relation. So, we also say this as RST property so that you will, it will be easier for you to memorize the three properties that must be satisfied by an equivalence relations. Now, in many cases, equivalence relations are written using this one and we read it as equivalent to. So the other symbols that we use when we talk about equivalence relations would be these two other symbols. So meaning to say if we have an equivalence relation, instead of writing A or B, we just write it as A is equivalent to B. Okay, so the reason why I just used R Previously is because I am reserving these symbols for equivalence relations. Now, we have seen in our last example of the previous video lecture that this relation given here is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, but not anti-symmetric. But it's okay. We do not need anti-symmetric property for our relation to be an equivalence relation. So, therefore, this Example over here is an equivalence relation. We have um, another example of, a, of an equivalence relation which we are all familiar with. The equality relation, correct? The equality relation on C is also an equivalence relation because it is symmet reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Now we are ready to go to the next example. Now for example 2, we are relating two integers because our set here is uh, the set of integers. We now say that A is related. For, for the meantime, I will I will read this as related because we haven't shown that this is really an equivalence relation, okay? So we say that A is related to B if A and B have the same parity. So let us check whether this is an equivalence relation. So first, let's check for reflexive property. So how will it look like? It will now be, for reflexive, we get one arbitrary element. So for all A in Z, is it true that A is related to itself? Yes, because A will have the same parity as itself, right? Next, let's check for the symmetric property. For the symmetric property, we are getting two elements. We are checking if A is related to B, then B must be related to A. Yes, this is true. A has the same parity as B, then B has the same parity as A. That's true. And lastly, for transitivity, for all, for transitivity, how many variables do we need? So we can start with this one, Muna. A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. So we have three three elements in Z. So let's check. So this one is saying A and B have the same parity. B and C have the same parity. Yes, it is true that A and C have the same parity. So therefore, it is really an equivalence relation. Now let us look at this example here. This is the first example we're in our set A here is a Cartesian product. Okay, so we are relating two ordered pairs. Okay, two ordered pairs A, B, and C, D. They will be related if 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared plus d squared. Now, how can we imagine that this is my a and this is my b? What is a squared plus b squared? That is the hypotenuse of the right triangle, correct? So, c squared plus d squared will also be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So, I can draw, let's say, I want to make sure that I have a right triangle there. So, this can be C, D. So, that's how I look at the relationship. Okay? But, again, notice that A and B can be negative here. But, just to have a geometric interpretation of this relation. Alright. So, let's check for reflexive property. Now, for the reflexive property, how many elements do we take? We take one element of a, but A here is an ordered pair. So, what will be an element? How will an element in A look like? It will be an ordered pair. So, for all A, B in A or R2, we want to check, will it be related to itself? Yes, because A squared plus B squared is equal to A squared plus b squared. Number two, let's check for symmetric property. For symmetric property, how many elements do we take? We have two elements, right? So we are checking for all, let's start with the quantifiers, for all a, b, one ordered pair, and then c, d, another ordered pair in R2. If a, b is related to c, d, is it true? that CD is related to AB? Yes, because if A squared plus B squared equals C squared plus D squared, that is the first one here, then it is true that C squared plus D squared equals a squared plus b squared and it just came from the fact that the equality relation is actually symmetric and this one also this is true because the equality relation is reflexive and lastly for the transitivity property we are getting three elements right so we get three ordered pairs a b c d e f all in r2 we are checking that if AB is related to CD and CD is related to EF, we must have that AB is related to EF. If we look at this one, let's write it using the definition of the relation. So we have A squared plus B squared equals c squared plus d squared. This is the first one. Okay, and then the second one will be c squared plus d squared equals e squared plus f squared. And therefore, a squared plus b squared equals e squared plus f squared. Again, it is also true because of the transitivity of the equality relation. So therefore, this relation is an equivalence relation.